In this video, we'll look at the new uh, point adjust feature, which presently exists in the 1D LUT graphs. Um, I've done two, and we only want one. There we go. Um, so we'll generate a LUT using uh, just targeting sRGB using this uh, ASUS uh, uh, GeoLED profile. In fact, if we look at that profile, um, just so we can see what it is we're working with, we can see that it's actually got a decent coverage. The uh, EOTF is targeting, uh, uh, when targeting sRGB is not bad. It seems to follow the, uh, the target EOTF quite well. If we zoom right into the shadows though, we can see that actually it's low in the shadows. So the EOTF is low and you can see that actually blue is uh, relatively significantly lower than uh, the other colors and if we look at the rgb balance we can see there that we've got a blue that is initially going low obviously the black point is uh, not measuring particularly well so there's obviously um, a, a, a kind of invalid data going on there but we can see the way that it starts as it gets into the shadows it significantly goes low blue high green um, so anyway, we're using that for now. Uh, this floaty point at the minute in these graphs is just showing me the data for the points that I've selected. Um, the uh, 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 reset and apply you'll see in a moment are functional in the 1D LUT graph, not yet in the profile graphs. But the fact it's here shows you that uh, that's where we're going. Anyway, if we go over to our LUT window, we will generate that LUT. which as you can see is quite a decent looking LUT. Uh, it looks very clean, smooth, and does appear that the profile data has enabled the generation of what is a particularly good LUT. If we look at the actual application of the LUT, you can see that we are not seeing any artifacts in the, uh, in the test image. Um, in the 1D LUT, we can see exactly what we expect, that it is correcting what we saw in the profile. It's lifting blue um, against the, uh, the the original and if we go right the way down into the shadows we can see that we've got this obviously correction happening for the near black points now in this instance this is correct the LUT is doing exactly what it should do but let's just assume that these are not quite what we want we want to make some adjustments to it but if we double click for example the blue we get our little floaty window again which we can move around and if I drop it back over the point it will redock so it's stuck to the point or if I move it up out of the way, it will stay there. So you've got a choice as to how you want to work with it. When I have a hover back over the selected point as well, you'll see an arrow appear. And that arrow means I can adjust the vertical position of that point. And the white line that appears shows me the correction that I have applied. If I want to adjust another point, let's say that green, uh, double click that you can see now we've got a little green arrow and I can adjust that point again with a line showing me where I've made a change. Notice that the points that I've adjusted have got a larger dot on them. That signifies that I've made an adjustment that's not yet been applied. So if I reselect that point you can see that it's still got the white marker or the white tangent line to show me the adjustment that has been made. If we make another one there you see we can actually pull these around. So if we were to do this for real, then we would actually want to maybe correct some of what we think in this instance is an error, although we know it's not really. So I can actually start to modify very subtly, and we can zoom right in, the corrections onto any given point. Yeah, there we go. So having got those done, I can now apply the, the present point selected and I need to apply them to any that I've got a change on if I want to maintain all the changes. Um, the reset, it will enable you to undo a correction if you haven't applied it. That just means it puts it back to where it was. Once you've applied, you can't uh, uh, undo that apply at the moment. Um, we probably will link it in with LUT adjust so that the undo redo here um, would enable that to be done, but that's not something that's in there at the moment, and we'll see how that goes with our development. Um, obviously, you can see all these points in the vertex data as well, so the point that you're working on the data is actually here as well, so you can see the actual cube data as well as the uh, XY coordinate data. Anyway, we've, we've made those changes. We can now 
uh, save that LUT by renaming it as um, just a point edit, OK, and save. And now we have that LUT with those corrections saved. It really is as simple as that. Obviously, we intend that we will uh, enable point adjust in the volumetric graph. In the moment, in the cube graph, we can't select any points. But obviously, when we go to our uh, profile, we call up the uh, GeoLeb profile again, just because that's the one we're working with. Um, we obviously have the ability in the volumetric graphs here to already select a point. And you can see that point is now selected. And actually, you get the pop-up data that shows you what that point information is. Um, the intention is that we will enable that those points to be adjusted in the, both the volumetric as well as the two-dimensional and the 1D graphs uh, as we progress with the capabilities of point adjust. I hope you like the new features, chaps.